Mari. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Disruptors Writing Festival. Bear with me a few moments while we just get sorted. Welcome to the Disruptors Writing Festival. Bear with me a few moments while we just there we go. Right, I'm just going to pull you guys up on my phone. We've got six people live, which is amazing, awesome. I have to come in through Zoom because I'm having some tech issues, uh, so bear with me while I just get myself sorted. Hi, Camille. Hi, Jody. Hello, everyone. Super freaking exciting to be with you today. Alrighty. Hi, Alison. Thank you. I'm just going to wait a few moments for people to start to watch start to join. Hi, River. Hi, Lizelle. Hi, Georgina. Hi, Josh. Hi, Jody. Alrighty. Let's wait a couple more moments. We can listen to a bit of uh, Bobby Womack. Okay. Hello, everyone. Hi, Shelly. Hi, Steph. Thank you, darling. Hi, Samantha. Hi, Odell. Great to see you. Oh, we are excited to be with you guys today and for the next few days. Ooh, I always like to start with a little bit of music just to kind of ground the energy to begin with. Um, yeah, it's been some pretty intense energy over the past week. I don't know if you guys have, I know you guys have been experiencing it as well uh, with the Lionsgate and just collectively what's happening around the world is pretty nuts. <laughs> Hi, Michelle. Hi, Kim. Hi, Alyssa. <laughs> Looking fierce, lioness vibes. Yeah, that's how I'm feeling. Absolutely. <laughs> um, all righty. So I'm going to turn that is down over here and I'm going to bring it up on yeah. over here. So just bear with me one sec. All righty. There we go. Okay, cool. Guys, I'm so excited. Hi, Jesse. Hi, everyone. I'm just so excited to be with you today. Um, welcome, officially welcome to the Disruptors Writing Festival. You guys are here because, and in some form or another, you consider yourself to be a disruptor. Maybe you recognize that from an outward perspective, or maybe you don't. I know there's a number of you here I can see. Hi, Melissa, welcome. Uh, I know there's a number of you who might not necessarily, you know, consider yourself to be a disruptor or the work that you do to, to be disruptive. However, I'm willing to bet because you're here in this festival with me today that, you know, at some level that the work that you do is actually disrupting. So what we're here today and over the next three days to talk about is the art of disruptive writing, um, the art of disruptive messaging, and how to actually uh, bring this disruptive element into your business, into your energetic world, so that you can get your mission out there, so that you can get your message out there, and so that you can really affect the kind of transformation that I believe is actually wired into your soul contract. So I will share a little bit. Hi, Helen. Yes, I'm a disruptor. I know you are, Jesse, big time. So uh, I know that there's a lot of you that I've never actually met before. There's so many new names. So if you're new to my world, I wanted to officially just say hello and introduce myself. Um, you probably know this by now, but my name is Tash, Tash Ashran, and I am a business strategist, and I'm also the CEO and founder of Ashran Publishing. Actually, this month is 12 months. It's my one-year anniversary since I started my publishing company, which is just crazy. I'm pretty floored by that, um, 12 months in. And I wanted to share a little bit, first of all, the background to why I decided to get into publishing. I did touch on this yesterday in the intro, in the intro video, but potentially you haven't watched that. So I wanted to share that because it's very important. And it has, it, it informs a lot of the work that I do with my authors and with my clients to support them in publishing their story to the world. So um, I've been in business strategy for about six years. I've been an entrepreneur for 12 years. I have started to see in the last 18 months, a lot of my clients starting to become censored, starting to become shadow banned on social media and starting in general, just to really see the 
potency or to experience that the potency of their message and the truth of what they're really here to say has been turned down, toned down, so to speak. This is a real problem, I believe, and I'm sure you probably believe this too, but if you are here, you're most likely a soulful entrepreneur, yeah? The work you do in your business is your soul work. And give me a high five or a love heart or a like if that is you, if the work you do in your business is your soul work. This is why and a really big part of the reason why you're here on the planet at this precise time in history is the work that you facilitate through your business. If you're toning your message down for many reasons, which we're going to talk about today, I can see lots of love hearts coming in. If you're toning down the potency of your message, it has a big impact on your business, on the work. Actually, it's not even business, right? As my mentor pointed out the other day, the etymology of business is busyness, right? So I actually am going to start, I prefer the term, you know, spiritual enterprise. If you're turning down the potency of your of your message, it has a very big impact on your enterprise that you're running, that you are the CEO of in a major way, right? What I'm going to be talking about as we go on over the next three days, this is the Disruptors Writing Festival. So hell, it might be a little bit disruptive, right? It might be a little bit controversial. It might push up against the edges of what is deemed appropriate and fucking push beyond, right? That's what we're really here to do over the next three days and beyond is generate not only the energetic integrity and the confidence and the courage to say the things that need to be said, to be bold as fuck in our message, to push the line, push up against the line and push right beyond, but also to actually generate some real, you know, writing styles, some writing skills, some tools, some strategies to implement into your message so that you can start getting tangible results in your business, okay? Tangible results looks like more clients inquiring and booking into you, into your calendar, more money accumulating in your bank account, more incredible transformation that your clients experience and as a result that has a ripple effect across the whole world, right? The people that I work with are disruptors. They are soulful entrepreneurs. They believe the work they do in their business is their soul work and the ripple effect is profound. So I'm willing to bet that everyone here, we've got 22 of you here today, in some form or another, you work in the transformation space. And I'd love to hear in the comments, please let us know, what do you do? What is the work that you facilitate? What is the disruption that you are here to initiate? 22 peeps, epic number. Yes. <laughs> what is the disruption that you're here to initiate? Pop it in the comments, okay? Because we really want to start to get this out there. Start getting into the, into the, into the experience of sharing your disruptive message. So I'm in publishing because I want to provide, no, not because I want, because I do provide a platform for my clients to share the potency, the raw, unfiltered truth of their message. Fuck social media. I mean, social media is important, but it shouldn't be the only way that you are actually growing your business. Okay. It's really important to have other ways, other eggs in other baskets, other platforms and, and, and uh, strategies that you're using to get your message out there and to be heard on a global stage. Publishing in my eyes is one of the best ways that you can do that by publishing your works, by publishing your, your IP, by sharing your message and your story with the world to touch, move and inspire, right? It is one of the most powerful ways that we can tap into expert level status that generates a whole host of different things, confidence, you know, there's a whole host of different things that comes when we're really able to stand in our expertise. So this is what I do. This is what I'm a stand for. I'm a stand for your unfiltered raw truth. I'm a stand for you expressing your message in a way that shifts the paradigm because guess what? We're at a crossroads right now. Yeah. If you're alive at this point, in the, at this precise point in history, delivering transformational work that disrupts in some way, then you are here for a very precise reason. And that reason is right now. What we're seeing happen and take place around the world is, is big, right? We can all feel the intensity of what's happening at the moment. I believe wholeheartedly that we need more people who are willing to stand in their unfiltered truth 
to peer beneath the layers of control and the layers of manipulation and to call it as it is, to call it as they see it, right? Because why? We are at the crossroads. We are at a crossroads of two very different timelines. And I'm going to break it down really simply. The timeline of love and the timeline of fear. The timeline of control and the timeline of freedom. So you better fucking believe that right now you are being called to step into radical unfuckwithableness, radical potency in the way that you express your message and your truth. So this transmission and the transmissions over the next few days are going to support you in doing that. And I'm really, really excited to see just who's turned up to this festival because you have been called to step onto the soapbox, to step onto the platform and to share your message with the world. And I'm excited to be able to really support each other as we watch each other do that. So please friend request each other in the group. Okay, I really encourage that. We need more people supporting our work as we get our message and our work out there. If you see someone in this Facebook group, if you see them out there on social media, claiming the courage and the tenacity to actually say what they really think, to say the things that people are thinking that no one else is saying, please comment and support them, okay? Because I'm going to be calling you forward to really take your message and push it far beyond the comfort zone. And we all need the support that we can get, okay? Today, we're talking the energetics of disruptive messaging. And this is very, very important. Very, very important because it will be the thing that has you crumble at the knees if you don't have this on point. So I have some notes over here and I have you guys on Facebook over here. So I'm going to be looking a few places, but I'm with you right now. Okay. So wanted to share. So um, as a publisher, I so far I've published two books, right? I've got the first one here. The second one I don't have because I've sold them all. The first one, I know there's a number of you guys here, uh, the authors, Wild Women Rising, Brave Women Who Carved Their Own Path. The second book that I've published, two multi-author books, is called Sacred Rebel, Women Who Dare to Disrupt. And the potency, the energetics of the books that I publish, they are very unique, they're very powerful, and they are very archetypal, okay? So the kinds of people that they call are very potent, very powerful, and people who are typically women who are ready to really take their message and put it on the global stage to be seen in a much bigger way. So for some of you, for the majority of you, this festival is going to be absolutely, it's going to give you tools. It's going to give you the energetic kick up the bum. It's going to put a, it's going to plug you into your power source and it's going to give you strategies to share your message in a much bolder, more confident, more disruptive way. But for some of you, you're going to want to take it a little step further, a few steps further. And I'm going to be sharing with you over the next three days two particular ways, two different ways that you can do that. The first one is going to be a, well, it is a multi-author book, my third multi-author book, which we are currently ex accepting expressions of interest and applications for. This book is called Unapologetic, Shedding in Authenticity to Become Uniquely You. And it is particularly aimed at women who work in the female empowerment space. So if the work you do in your business supports other women to step into their unapologetic self, into their, or into, into their, unfuckwithable authenticity, then this is potentially a book that you want to maybe reach out and inquire about. For some of you, a very small minority, for some of you, you will be the right fit for my high-level VIP solo book container. I only have six spots available. And I'm particularly looking for, for people who have, who demonstrate to me that they have the courage to do what it takes to get their book out there. Okay, so we're going to be talking about book writing. We're going to be talking about publishing and how to actually get your words printed, how to become published and how to use that to launch your, your, your message and to launch your platform. Let me tell you, if you've ever published a book or not, I've personally published five, right? The last one that I published, or well, sorry, not that I published, that I authored, I co-authored, it went to USA Today bestseller, which is a massive deal, which means it was in the top 100 books sold in all of the United States. It's pretty huge. Um, but for those of you who maybe haven't ever written a book, you may or may not realize that writing a book and sharing your message, becoming published in this way, is very much like giving birth. It is, in fact, I consider it to be a birth. 
it is a birth of of an entity of an energy that comes into the re, into this reality that has an impact just like a child does and so when we are writing and publishing and launching a book just like when we are in the throes of labor our shit comes up to meet us right we are always challenged by the limitations of our perception yeah and just like disruptive messaging it's very much this very much the same the energetics are quite similar just like disruptive messaging your job when you're publishing a book especially if this is your solo book but absolutely the case if this is a multi author book as well your job is to push beyond to push your perception beyond what you thought you were capable of right because let me tell you things will come up left right and center to try and challenge you to stay back in that box where it is safe Publishing will put you on the global stage. It will give you a massive, massive amount of momentum, of expert level status, a huge amount of exposure, right? And that can trigger the nervous system. Just like putting out a disruptive message or putting out a piece of disruptive writing, it will suddenly draw a huge amount of eyes to you. Because why? It's disruptive. It's designed to activate. It's designed to shock people out of the reverie that they are caught in, right? It's designed to really electrocute someone awake. The same is true for publishing. Publishing your book, it will do the same thing. So they're two very similar energetics. And I'm going to be talking a lot as we go through over how we can actually really take this, take this energy and ignite the message that's within you. So let me have a look over here. The energetics of disruptive messaging, just like I said, when we are, when we're really standing or preparing to stand in this space of disruption, first of all, we need to know what disruption is, right? What does it mean to be, to be a disruptor or to call upon disruptive energy, to grow your business, to grow your visibility, to grow your impact, to grow the, the, the mission that you are here to facilitate through your soul work. And really, it's disrupting someone's consciousness, right? Disrupting the way, disrupting their perception of what they believe is truth, of what they believe is reality. If you put out a piece of disruptive messaging, you need to be prepared to withstand the shockwaves that can come back to you and will come back upon you, which is why energetics and what we're talking about today is oh so very powerful. So what I wanted to ask you as we go in, as we engage upon this journey, as you come into my vortex and we go on a, on a journey over the next three days, I wanted to ask you, how often do you modulate your truth? Do you modulate your self-expression? How often do you tone down something that you were going to say because of various reasons, right? Because maybe there's fear there, fear of rocking the boat, fear of upsetting the apple cart fear of rejection, fear of judgment, fear of criticism, fear of deplatforming. That's a big one at the moment. Huge, right? How many times do we see people who put out a big disruptive message and then boom, they're off social media? This happened to my partner exactly 12 months ago, which was another big reason why I decided to go into publishing. He put out a few posts that were considered misinformed and boom, all of a sudden, he had no Facebook account. They completely and utterly deplatformed him, including his business page that had 35,000 likes. So I saw how quickly this can happen, right? It can happen literally like that. We need to have other methods in place to ensure that we're not putting all of our eggs in the same basket. But back to my question, all right? Fear of Facebook jail, exactly. Back to my question, how often do you find yourself toning down your truth, right? Toning down the potency of your rawness, and, you know, we can go into the, into the history of this, right? You probably, we're not going to spend a lot of time here, but potentially as empowered, well, as fierce women and men, right? We have been told in the past to tone it down, that we're too much. I know I've got bright red curly hair. When I was a child, I stood out like a sore thumb. I stood out like a sore thumb. And my boldness was scrubbed, well, not was scrubbed out of me. I turned it down and toned it down because of the attention that it drew me, right? Because of the amount of 
criticism that it drew and, and, and judgment, especially when I was in primary school. So I've had to work pretty hard, not hard, but I've had to really work at turning that back up, learning how to dial it back up, right? Because especially when we have a powerful and potent message, and this actually goes beyond message, this is about mission. When we have a powerful and potent mission that is beyond our ego, that is beyond our fear, that is deeply connected to our soul and our soul contract and the reason why you're in business, when you have a mission that is beyond all of that, eventually you get to a point where you realize that you playing small and you keeping yourself caught in energetic, in an energetic bind isn't going to cut it any longer. So some of you have probably reached that point. Some of you might be starting to reach that point. Some of you might not be consciously aware of that point yet. When we're talking about this, I like to consider it from the perspective of the good girl, yeah? So the good girl and the disruptive entrepreneur, they will cancel each other out, right? Depending upon the, the one that is that has the more energy, that has more energy behind it, will always be the one that wins, right? Whether it's your inner good girl the, or inner good boy, I know we have a few guys here, the, one, the part of you that doesn't want to rock the boat, that wants everyone to be happy, that wants everyone to get along, that wants everyone to like her, that wants everyone to like him, or the version of you that's fucking bold as fuck, that is willing to say, that's willing to cross the line to get her message out there and to get her, her the mission that she is on or the mission that he is on out there. So really like starting to have this inquiry, I know for me, it was when I realized the, the massive realization that I was equating, I was collapsing being direct with being mean. That was a huge realization for me. And I had it about three years ago. Every time I was trying to be direct unconsciously, I was like, that's mean. They're not going to like that. That's going to, dis that's going to upset them. Fuck, that had a huge impact on the way I was showing up and, you know, powerfully or not powerfully articulating my message. So I want you to really tune in. First of all, before we go on this journey of uncovering genius, streaming it through writing and then downloading your paradigm shattering book, <laughs> how much are you allowing this to happen, to occur? And it, obviously it starts in your nervous system. It starts in your energetics. All right. So when we start to understand the energetics of disruptive marketing and messaging, we recognize that this is the first place to begin, okay? Your capacity to, your capacity for your inner disruptive entrepreneur to be more empowered than the inner good girl or the inner good boy. And if you're really standing in the seat of your disruptive entrepreneur, the, the, the part of you that, that is here to facilitate a mission, the part of you that is here to initiate transformation, the part of you that is here to disrupt people's consciousness and to help them perceive the world in a new way, in a different way, then you will understand that that is so much more powerful than the version of you that wants to stay small and the version of you that wants to stay quiet and appease everyone. So your disruptive entrepreneur, this version of you who knows exactly what it is that she is here to say, or he is here to say, this is the version of you who doesn't go weak at the knees every time she's about to post something that might upset the apple cart, right, that might initiate shockwaves. So how do you learn to withstand that? And I'd love to ask you, how do you withstand that? Do you withstand that or do you turn it down slightly, slowly, slowly, slowly so that it's, you know, something, a post or a message that you're getting across that's, you know, it's going to slide under the radar. It's not going to bring as much attention upon you. But this is the Disruptors Writing Festival, okay? So I really want to encourage you to come back into your breath, right, to come back into your breath. Your breath at this point is the most powerful tool that you have to ride the waves, especially when you're about to share something that is powerful. <clears throat> All of my authors, when we are just about to publish something, there will typically be a moment where they go, fuck, I don't want to publish that to the world. 
it happens with everyone it happens quite differently it happens at different times but there will typically be that moment let me tell you a story the book that I co-authored the younger self letters back in May it was released and it charted in the bestseller list for the you know for the USA Today list right the one that I mentioned at the beginning which is huge we had like I don't even, I think it was 15,000 sales to get to that point. It was massive. I published in that book a story uh, of my life, of my past at a time, uh, of a time in my life when I was in the throes of postnatal depression. My firstborn was two years old and I was, I was at a, I was at a crossroads. I was at a tipping point, right? I was in the throes of postnatal depression. And it was this one particular point in time when I was literally about to grab that razor and I was about to do something that there would be no coming back from. And so this is the story that I have been terrified of sharing my suicidal moment, right? My sliding doors moment. I'd been absolutely terrified of sharing that story because I was worried about how it would look. I was worried about how people were going to judge me for it. Maybe consider that I would maybe start to see that I wasn't as professional as I've showed everyone, as I showed the world, or I wasn't as strong as I tried to be. Let me tell you just the minute before, the moments before that book was published, I don't think I have ever encountered such terror such anxiety right such shock of like man if I had that chapter in front of me right now I would write it completely differently and I would take out all of the gritty rawness I was having moments where I was like it's too much people are going to be overwhelmed it's going to people are going to they're going to hate me they're going to leave me but I rode through that, right? I wrote it out. I wrote it out with my breath. And actually I had no choice. I'd already submitted it. It was already, it was done. The baby had left the birth canal. So I know firsthand the, the intensity that sharing disruptive messages and sharing parts of you that feel vulnerable and parts of you that feel too much, sharing that with the world, I know the intensity that can come with that. But I very much believe that you and your message and the mission that you're on is bigger than your fear. It's bigger than your intensity. It's bigger than what your auntie or your uncle or your brother or your mom or your dad might say. And often when we are actually stuck in this fear of like, can I really say that? Should I really say that? Often it's people from our family and people from our past and the, the looming threat of them reading it and saying something that's holding us back. So the first step that I have for you is to actually consider, especially when we're doing social media, like disruptive social media messaging, who do you need to clear from your friends list? Are there people on there that you need to actually just unfriend so that whenever you are about to post something disruptive, you don't have their voice in the back of your head going, that's not okay. I did this a few years ago. I unfriended my brother. I unfriended all of my extended family. Uh, I unfriended a number of people from school, old school friends, because every time I was about to post something, they were the ones that were there looming over me going, you know, in my psyche going, you shouldn't say that. Oh my God, what are people going to think? And that's definitely one of the first places to start. All right. A first place to start. So I wanted to talk here about the, what we're going to be moving into. My mentor calls this striking the tone of truth, right? And this is what I really believe. Your inner disruptive entrepreneur knows in their soul your particular tone of truth. And I always imagine this phrase, the tone of truth. It's like a gong, a giant gong, that when you strike it, when you strike that tone perfectly, the frequency, the energetics, it's, it ripples all out around the world, right? Whether that's through a post that you write or whether that's through something that you say, it puts it out there all around, like it puts it all around the world, right? And your people energetically resonate. They will start to resonate with that. You can't see me, but my hands are going like this. Your people, your soul clients, right? Your soul tribe, the people who are called to the highest expression of your work, the highest expression of your transformation, they will feel it energetically, they do. And they will start to move towards you. So what is your tone of truth? What is this highest level tone, this highest level quality that is yours to share? I'm having a look over here. 
what is it? Like that's what we're going to be delving into. And in order to really tap into that, into your unique tone of truth, your unique expression, the highest level expression of you and your message and your mission and the things that you stand for, you need to know the answers to all of those things. All righty, let me just scroll. Okay, cool. So I'd love to hear in the, in the comments, okay, what do you stand for? in your business, in the mission that you're here to facilitate at this precise point in history, at this precise time right now with everything that's happening all around the world, what do you a stand for? What do you a stand against? What is it that you are disrupting through your message and through the work that you do, through the, in, through the transformation that you facilitate? What is it that you are disrupting? This is a really important inquiry that we're going to be going on over the next three days. How does disruption show up for you in your work, in the work you do with your clients? So I know for a lot of my clients and my authors, they do work with, with clients, right, whether it's in consulting work or coaching work or therapy work or, you know, healing, the work that they do in that sacred container with their clients, they're supporting them to disrupt their old thought patterns or disrupt their habits or disrupt the, their, their conscious understand or subconscious understanding of the world. There is some aspect to their work that they do, which is actual tangible disruption. So from a one-to-one -one perspective, you with your clients, what is that disruption that you help them to initiate? From a bigger picture perspective, what is the disruption that you are here to initiate societally? So for me personally, I'm a big stand for redistributing some of the global wealth, a lot of the global wealth into the hands of empowered and conscious leaders. Why? Because I believe that the world needs better fucking leaders. And entrepreneurs typically are the ones that are challenging the status quo, that have the courage to continue, to continue to go, even in the face of challenges, even in the face of things not going the way they want, right? They have tenacity, they have grit, they have, they have courage, they have determination. I'm a massive stand for redistributing money into, those, into the hands of those people because I believe that good people do good things with money, right? I'm also a stand for people learning how to expand their conscious awareness, learning how to expand their perception so that they're not stuck in the same box of the way they view the world, right? So that we can experience more tolerance, more understanding, more consciousness, around what it is that we're actually doing. And importantly, my biggest thing that I stand for, the biggest thing that I stand for is helping leaders to share their message with the world, to helping them leave a legacy through published works, through publishing their books, through, through shattering the paradigm in order to initiate the new way, the new way of operating, the new paradigm, the waking dream, the new earth. There's a lot of different ways that we can that we can express this, but I believe we are at that crossroads, right? That crossroads, which has to like the time is now. The time is now. What do you believe needs to change about your industry? What is it that you are here to disrupt about your industry? This is a very, very powerful question. And after this transmission, I'm going to be putting some prompts in a separate post. And I would love for you to start to create some writing around this, okay? Every single time I put a post out that talks about these things, that shares my strong point of view, that talks about my mission and my vision and the things that I stand against and how the work that I do in my industry actually disrupts the way, like it disrupts the traditional norms. These are very, very powerful questions to start to articulate and communicate around. So I want you to, once I've, I've put these posts, these questions up, I want you to spend some time today and sometimes these, these posts can come out in a matter of minutes. Sometimes it takes longer to really articulate, to really tap into what it is that you're trying to say. But when it comes to writing, the best way to begin is to fucking begin, right? So I say to all of my authors when I start working with them, 
to create a consistent journaling practice. This is one of the most powerful ways that I actually generate content, right? So every day you might hear it in uh, the good old artist way, which is a book that I love. She talks about, uh, Julia Cameron talks about the morning pages, right? At the moment, it's a bit tricky for me because I have a six month old baby, but every day I try and find at least 20 to 30 minutes where I can sit down with my journal and I can just simply write for the pleasure of writing, for the pleasure of being with myself and my words and my thoughts, for the pleasure of helping me to actually figure out what it is that I'm trying to say. And so tell me in the comments if you feel that your message is like it's a bit wishy-washy, you're not really clear on what it is that you're really doing, on what it is that you're really here to say, on what it is that you really facilitate. That's a very, very common thing that I see that I've experienced within myself for a long time and that a lot of my clients come to me and my authors come to me experiencing. They're like, you know, I can, I, 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 when I'm in conversation with someone and when I'm bouncing ideas off someone, I know exactly what it is that I, that I, that I must stand for and that I can, I can communicate it powerfully and I can communicate it, I can articulate it in a way that lands but when it comes time for me to actually sit down and write, sit down and create a post or even sit down and write my book, I, I'm, I have nothing. I'm, I'm creatively constipated. I'm blocked. I don't know what to say. Tell me if you experience that. It's super common, right? We call it, you know, creators, uh, writer's block. There's a whole host of different ways that we can talk about it. But at the end of the day, I really believe this is because in some form or another, energetically, you are blocking yourself from truly tapping into the highest expression of your message. And we need to ask why. Why? Probably because the thought of really saying what you are really here to say, the truest truth of your message is terrifying, right? the visibility that that actually evokes, the shockwaves <laughs> that that evokes is big. So let me know in the comments if you've experienced that. I know that there's a lot of people out there and one of the best ways that we can start to sort through the mental, the mental cotton wool, right? It can sometimes feel like cotton wool in, in our brain. It means we can't think very clearly and, you know, we need that. We need to be in response with our environment to really be able to articulate. The best way we can actually start to sort through that is to create a writing practice, right, is to create a journaling practice. So I'm going to encourage you to start to journal on a consistent basis, even if that is just sitting down with your notebook and writing four pages of I have nothing to say. I don't know why I'm doing this. This feels ridiculous. This feels stupid right? Literally just saying anything, writing anything. This is going to start to get the energy moving in your creative channel, all right? And tomorrow we're going to be talking a lot about how to start to activate that creative channel so that we can stream our genius and stream our higher self, stream the, our soul through into our writing so that we can write in a way that, boom, it activates that tone of truth. Boom, people listen. They go, you know, the shockwaves are felt and we can withstand the negativity that might come. But more importantly, it brings towards us the people who are our absolute fit. Our, they are our tribe, our soul clients. So we need to know what we stand for. All right. What is it that you are doing in your business? What is the mission that you facilitate? What is it that you're really like? What is it that you really do with your clients when you're in that one on one container or group container with your clients? What is it that you're actually doing with them? What are the transformations that they experience? And are you sharing this with your community? Are you sharing this in your content? The truth is, if you're working with clients, actually you have inspiration everywhere for content. Every, everywhere, every single client session, there's probably 50 different topics for content pieces. When it comes to writing a book, right, the amount of different things that you cover in one client session, you'd be able to probably fill an entire book with that if you expand and go into the layers and the nuances of what it is that you cover. You have inspiration everywhere. It's all around you. Every time you see something on the news or maybe you don't watch the news, every time you, you come across something on social media or you talk to someone who has a different opinion than you, that, than, than you 
You have inspiration in that. Are you sharing this with your people? Are you sharing this with your community? What I love to do from a practical level is I have a folder in my notes section on my phone called an ideas stream. So it's give the idea of the name of this was given to me by an old mentor, ideas stream. And so whenever I have an idea or whenever something that I have a strong point of view about arises in my reality, I will put it into that notes. I'll put it into that folder in my notes as a, as a manifesting generator from the human design body of knowledge. I love to work in response to my environment. And I find that I personally create content very quickly and very powerfully when I am in response to something, when I'm saying something in response, whether that's in response to a client session or in response to a question that was asked of me or in response to something I see on the news or something that someone says that I disagree with or something that someone says that I agree with. Having a list and it's long, like it is so long, I can scroll and scroll and scroll for ages, right? And then when it comes time for me to create content, I will go to that and the one that there will be one that jumps out at me. And typically when I sit down to write and to message about this, it especially if it's in response and especially if it's something that I feel strongly about, it will come through pretty quickly. It will come through, right? And the, the energetic integrity will be connected to the words. So it's a very powerful way to start to create disruptive messaging and disruptive writing. And Jen here as well, waiting sucks. I know it's so hard not to initiate, right? <laughs> it's been actually three years of learning how to not initiate, how to wait for the response. So I really want you to sit with these questions that I'm going to pose. What needs to change in your view? What needs to change about society? What needs to change about your industry? What needs to change? What needs to change about, about something that you feel passionate about? What's your strong point of view? Essentially, we can boil it down to this. The answer to this question. What's your strong point of view as it relates to society? As it relates to coronavirus as it relates to your your the transformation that you facilitate as it relates to your industry as it relates to what you believe is possible for your clients what is your strong point of view are you willing to say it and are you willing to say it in a way that cuts through the layer of fat that sits on top of social media right that's kind of how I see it these days you know it's like this thick layer of fat that sits at the top and we have to slice through it with our words, whether that's spoken or whether that's written. I'm going to have some kombucha. So I want you to start to see the potential in your words and the potential in your writing. When I connect with the decise, my inner disruptor, the image that comes to mind is like I use my words like a knife that slices through layers of perception as a knife that slices through the slices through the fat that slices through the bullshit that slices through the you know the words that everyone else is regurgitating i use my words like a knife that pierces the veil and this is disruptive messaging the energetics of disruptive messaging to me this is how i see it i want to know how you see it I want to know how it arises within you. So I'm going to, I know we have a lot of comments, so I'm not going to be able to go through and respond to all of them. However, that pretty much is, let me sit with that. That's pretty much what I wanted to cover today. I wanted to light the uh, energetic firecracker underneath your proverbial bum. I wanted to ask you, where are you buying into your good girl bullshit or your good boy bullshit? Where are you toning down the potency of your message because of fear, because of try upsetting the tribe, right? Where are you not really expressing your strong point of view? And start to really breathe life into this archetypal energy within you that is your inner disruptor your inner disruptive entrepreneur who's here to change the fucking world he and she is here to help initiate transformation at a time in history 
where we need it. We need it. So I've got goosebumps all over my body. We need you to speak up. We need you to speak up now more than ever. So direct, potent, quick, cut the fluff. Cut the fluff. Oh, man, there's so much fluff, right? I mean, even if you go back and read over your content that you've written in the past, I know I did this the other day. I was reading through some of my old content. I was like, oh, it's fucking bullshit. It just sounds like everyone else, right? I sound like everyone else. So how do I connect with my unique voice, right? And we do this differently. Every single one of us has a different has a different way that we connect with that. And my job in the containers that I hold, whether that's in the multi-author books that I run or my solo group program, Oracle Unleashed, which is all about supporting my clients to write and, and publish and launch their own book, my job is to help you connect with your own creative sources remembering that every single one of us does this very differently. And if you are a disruptor, if you have disruptive energy, you won't do it like everyone else. The way that you connect with your tone of truth and your creative inspiration will be very unique to you. But we start by creating practices that support us in removing the layers, taking away the layers till we get to the true gems underneath, right? The true messages and words and activations that are designed to disrupt people from the reverie that they are in. Man, you see, I see so many zombies at the moment, people that are walking around and they are completely asleep, right? And I don't mean to say that from the perspective of, you know, like you hear people talk about it like they're sheep or sheeple. I don't buy into that. I think that that's actually really demeaning. But I do believe that there's a lot of people out there, their reasoning centres are offline, they are completely and utterly existing in their amygdala, in the fear response, which means like this tiny fraction of their brain is running the show. They are in fight, flight, or freeze, right? They are in stress. They are not thinking clearly. So how is it that we can start to help people, like to disrupt that, to help them tap into and like get their brains back online? Think about things from this perspective. Understand this from a different way. This is our job when we are standing in the seat of disruption. All righty, that is it for me today. Thank you so much for being with me. We've had 25 people, 23 people with me live, which is really, really, really amazing. Um, I'm so excited to be with you over the next three days. Please, if you haven't yet, please introduce yourself. You're most welcome to create your own post and actually post the responses that you come up with to the questions that I'm going to ask. These are probably questions that you've asked yourself before, but as you shift and change and evolve, your message will shift and change and evolve. Your strong points of view will shift and change and evolve. So it's really powerful to come back to this time and time again. Yeah. And of course, tomorrow we'll be meeting at the same time through Facebook live. I'm excited to be with you on this journey. Alrighty, my darlings. Thank you. Thank you so much, Georgina. Thank you, Helen, Jody, Joy. Nice to see you, Samantha, Lyndall, Allison, Jassy, Josh. Awesome, Alishina. Let me know if that's the way that I'm pronouncing your name. Even message it to me, uh, voice message it to me, so that I can hear it. That would be awesome, Adele. And if I'm not pronouncing anyone's name right, please do the same. Alrighty, everyone. Take care. I'll see you tomorrow, and I'll see you back in the Facebook group later today with your journaling prompts. Alrighty.